everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Six Figure Certified, the podcast powered by IGC Coaching School. I'm your host, Liv Chapman, and we have a guest episode today. We haven't had a guest episode in a while. Yay. I am joined by Christina Di Natale. She is an almost graduate of IGC. And you know, if you have been following along and you like are up to date on all the episodes, you know that this month we're talking all about money and I couldn't think of a better student slash entrepreneur uh, to have on as a guest in March because I have been watching her journey since she started coach training. And I've just thought she has been such an exemplary student, especially when it comes to sales and money and her knowledge around it. I actually, I'm going to turn it over to you, let you introduce yourself, but I've had so many students come tell me that they've learned so much from you, just at having you as a peer in their class. So <laughs> Christina's at legit, oh, she, you graduate next week, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And she has just been such a great student and she has an interesting skill set and knowledge base that... I also think is super valuable for women to hear about, especially women entrepreneurs. Christina, welcome. Thanks for being oh, here. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, this is a dream come true. I actually had this on my vision board. So thank you <laughs> again for making this a reality. Um, those work, by the way, you guys. So, yeah, my name is Christina Dinatelli. I have been an entrepreneur for about five years. I've been a life insurance broker. That's been my main practice. And then within the last six months, um, you know, I started IGC, phenomenal, phenomenal school. Uh, everybody there is amazing. And then um, I actually recently also started my own travel agency. So I'm a travel agency owner. So I do a little bit of everything. Um, I call myself kind of a jack of all trades, but my main focus or my main business that I've been doing over the last year, uh, five years has been life insurance and then specifically geared towards um, you know, cash value products, compound mm -hmm. interest options, those kind of things. So it is interesting because it's it's kind of out of the scope of what people know. Yeah. Um, and it, it's really, really cool. Well, I love this too, because a lot of people that come into entrepreneurship, they worry about things like insurance, typically health insurance, which I know you don't really deal with, but I'm sure you know people who do. But how do you actually save for retirement? How do you set yourself up financially as a business owner? And I had purchased a... um life insurance policy before I had met you. And then you actually got me in a better one. And so first, I'm just going to say, I'm not giving any financial advice. If you're listening to this, this is all my opinion. If you want to do what I do, cool. If not, it's not advice. But Christina actually helped me to get into a better product for life insurance that does make compound interest. And what did you say? Because if I was listening to this a few years ago, I would be like, I'm lost. I don't even know what those words mean. <laughs> One of the biggest things that I believe as a society that is not an accident that we're not taught is financial literacy and emotional regulation. Mm -hmm. And those are two of the biggest things that I had to overcome as an entrepreneur. Now, when I started in life insurance, all I knew about life insurance is what we all know about life insurance is that when you pass away, that money goes to your family and yeah. you know, they're taking care of if something happens to you. Now, what people don't know is that there are cash value products out there. I call them Build-A-Bear products that can be geared more towards making interest. And the cool thing about it is that it's accessible compound interest that is tax-free. So instead of, you know, like, so what do we know about IRA and 401k? So IRA and 401k is a retirement accounts. You're not supposed to touch them before you retire. Um, otherwise you can get penalized and then you pay taxes depending if it's a Roth or not prior to investment or after you invest, right? Right. Whereas with these ones, you put money in there and it is accessible. The reason why it's tax-free interest is because the government doesn't have overview of what you make with compound interest. Now, there's a lot of things that you kind of have to take into consideration here. Um, they're Build-A-Bear. So you want to make sure that you go to somebody who actually knows how to set them up and not to be the whistleblower of my own industry. Um, I know probably 100 to 150 brokers, maybe five of them actually know how to set these up correctly to have it geared towards interest and the ones that do don't because the more money you put in your client's pocket, the less you make in yours. That's so, why my first one, I think, wasn't set up properly. I kept it because it functions as a good, like, regular life insurance policy. <laughs> but in order to make... If you have ever watched any of the... This is kind of how I knew about it for the people who are like, what are these women talking about? I, have you ever heard of those people that are like, you can become your own bank and you can borrow money from yourself? That's kind of what sparked my interest in these policies as just an, a way to diversify my income and also a way to kind of save for retirement or other things, which we don't typically do, um, especially as entrepreneurs. Like we don't, 
I mean, some of us probably do, but I don't think we have those like 401ks anymore or pensions or whatever we may have been used to at our old jobs. Well, and it's also good. So, I mean, I I truly believe in having like a diverse financial portfolio. You should have like a little bit of everything, but most, and it's so interesting because there is so much controversy around these products because there is a right and a wrong way to set them up. So the policy you had definitely wasn't a bad one. It was an A-rated carrier, but any like express products are not geared towards interest. They're geared towards having like a solid death benefit. Your payment doesn't increase those kind of things. So maybe like I can backtrack a little bit of what I tell people to kind of simplify it because like it's not like well-known information. So the way that I would describe these products is like there are two different accounts. So when you have your death benefit, that's what we all know. If something happens to you, It goes to your family, you're taking care of, you're good to go. Now, the second part of it is going to be the living benefits. So like, say for instance, you got into, so it almost kind of acts like health insurance. So like if you had gotten a terminal illness or into a a horrible car accident, just weren't able to physically work, you can actually cash out that death benefit early. So that's a part of the living benefits, right? So I've had clients of mine that, you know, had their policy three, four years, I had cancer. I actually had a client of mine who had cancer. He was able to cash out his $400,000 policy to help pay for expenses. Wow. So that is one way. Yeah. So those writers and things that your broker is putting on for you, or at least I can speak for myself that I have on for you, they're there to protect you. So, and then the other part of it is what I call the piggy bank. So you have the death benefit and then that's what I call the piggy bank. Now the piggy bank is the bank that is making uninterrupted compound interest for you for the duration of the policy's life. So it, a lot of it is going to depend on age and health. Um, big thing that I run into is like, oh, Christina will give me like three years because I want to be able to put in more money. And it's like, actually, it's better for you to start the younger you are because it's about time in the market, not timing it. So mm-hmm. you're losing the time is the one resource we don't get back. Money is always going to come back. Everything else is always going to come back. But time is the one resource we don't have. So it's better to start off smaller and have it for a longer period of time than a shorter period of time. Um, The other thing too is like, again, you want to make sure that these are set up correctly. If you want it to be what I call interest heavy, you want to set it up to where the death benefit is as low as humanly possible. So the cost of insurance is low. So that way the majority of your premiums are going into like that piggy bank, right? Um, I think what some people have gotten caught up with is There's no such thing as a get rich quick scheme. I think some people are looking for like cheat codes or cutting corners. That's not how investing works at all. Um, You have to make sure that like you're you're playing longer, right? It's time in the market. So when you're wanting these to make the max amount of interest as humanly possible, you want the cost of insurance. So say like you're paying over the policy for like 20 years. You want that cost of insurance to come out heavy within the first couple of years. So like say you're paying for 20 years, you're paying the cost of insurance for like, three to five years, depending on the policy. So that way you're playing the market for 15 years that you're paying, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Instead of if you have it like death benefit heavy, you're paying that cost of insurance for like the the whole duration that you're paying for it. Regardless, you'll make interest anyway, but to maximize it, you want to set it up a certain way. So that way the cost of insurance is out of the way. Um, The way I can, and again, I can speak for myself. I, I put quite a bit in there now because I've used it to move myself to Colorado. I've used it to purchase like a few stocks and things that, um, oh my God, a year ago, I can't believe that. It's already been a year, a year ago. So I've used it for myself. And I also have it set up to where um, my payments stop at age 60 and I will still be passively making $150,000 a year, even after I would stop contributing because it's just, it just becomes a monster at that point. Cause it's going to continue to grow for you, whether or not you contribute to it. But the caveat is here is making sure that you have somebody who actually knows how to do it because most brokers don't. And um, I guess I can speak to that because when you get licensed, you like you get taught all these things, but each carrier has their own IUL. So you have like 10 different IUL products within one carrier, so many different thresholds. So unless like your broker really cares to know and sits on sales support, like they just might not know and that's not their fault. Yeah. But you do want to make sure you go to an experienced person. Okay. And did we define IUL? Oh, no, we didn't. I think we should move backwards. New, new women in investing. I got you. I would have had the same question. So IUL is? Index Universal Life. Yes. And it's a type of life insurance policy that obviously Christina just explained in depth for us. It's a way to diversify your financial portfolio. I also, before we talk about like your shift and 
moving into coaching and all of that. But like, I also bought, I own four of these policies now, and I also got them for my kids. I -hmm. think that's an important thing to talk about too, because I'll just tell you straight up those I'm paying, I think a hundred dollars a month per kid. I can't even remember how much money they're going to have by the time they're like 30. It's like a lot. I would, yes, have to look, yes. I would have to log in and see. But I think one of the things that we hear a lot, especially with the women or women who are attracted to IGC and our values, is a lot of these women are going to be the first millionaires in their family. A lot of women that come into IGC are not women that came from you know, wealth or money. They want to be the first person in their family to create that legacy, to make it easier for their children. And I really believe in that myself. Like, you know, have student loan debt. I did not have anything handed to me. <laughs> except trauma. Yeah. And um, <laughs> so I saw a meme the other day. It was like, how come I got, I inherited trauma instead of generational wealth? And I'm like, oh, reminder, like, that's what my job is in this family. Got it. I'm on it. Uh, but I really like this for them to not become spoiled trust fund babies, but to, you know, just at least start with something versus start in the negative. Like I often feel like I started at like 200K in the negative as an adult, like with student loan debt and all that. Uh, And I would like my kids to at least start at zero or the positive, like, you know, if they decide to go to college and pay for that with their money that I've set up for them. But these are so affordable if you start them young. Yeah, well, and it's time in the market, right? So my, um, it's funny, I just set one up for my goddaughter and she's going to have more money th- than I did even just by age like 21. And she's six years old right now. So it's it's the children's products, in my opinion, are the best because you get the cost of insurance out of the way before they even hit like kindergarten or first grade if you get it young yeah. enough, right? Or before they even hit middle school. And so the cost of insurance is so low because they're so young. So you get that out of the way immediately. And then it's just a cash cow at some point. Again, if they're set up correctly, I can't stress that enough, right? Uh, And then, so when I started my business, just oversharing here, I had like a 750 credit score that I was very proud of. Maybe that's not big for some people, but I'm so proud of that. And it tanked when I started my business. So I went into crazy debt. I was living off of credit cards. Um, If I would have had something like this put into place for me, or like if my mom, I mean, I just don't think most parents know how these work. They know about the 401, 501Cs or whatever those like other college accounts are. Oh, which are those yeah. are very good, by the way. I am not knocking yeah, them at all. Those too. Yeah. 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 And you should. Yeah. The one, the thing, the insurance thing I like about it, though, is it is so like versatile. So they can use it if they want to start their own business to pay for a wedding, pay for a car, pay for college. Like, and it's going to continue to grow anyways. Like this biggest mistake you can make as an adult is to stop paying on it, even though it like, it'll continue to grow for you. But it, the biggest mistake you can make is to like cancel it and not pay on it anymore. Because at that point, it's just a money making machine, yeah. you know, um, but they can use it for their retirement and they can use it for to purchase their first house instead of pulling from their IRA, 401k. It's just, it's really just there. And I mean, again, it's life insurance. If something happens to them, their family's taken care of before they even knew that was something to worry about. Yeah. So it's just good financial planning for your kids um, in in advance. I mean, so much so that like, I mean, I make videos all the time. I don't have kids, but when I do, they're going to be making compound interest before they're out of diapers. Right. And I think when you grew up with such a poverty mindset, you don't realize that those options are available to everybody, not just like the rich and famous. Well, yeah. Uh, and that's what I'm saying. You you kind of said to me, like, how much do you want to invest in this monthly and then designed a policy around that? So if you're listening to this and you're like, I don't have enough money, you actually might. You actually might. And if you need to learn how to make more, then you can come to coach training too. So, <laughs> but I, I like that aspect of it, like it wasn't, you don't need, you know, a thousand dollars a month per kid by any means. I mean, if you have that to invest, great, but you can absolutely start small. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And as long as you stay under that neck premium, I feel like I'm giving away all these secrets. Hopefully nobody finds this. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, so there's something called the neck premium, which is the modified endowment contract. Basically, the sweet spot you want to have is a low enough premium to where you're happy with the numbers of the compound interest side of things and the death benefit. But you want the MEC premium to be high enough to where you can contribute to the MEC premium 
before it's considered taxable income. I may not have explained that well. Let well, me I, you explained it to me a while ago, and I don't think you can give away too much. We're going to leave Christina's info here so you can book a call with her or contact her if you have any insurance questions. I told you I went through someone else before. It was not set up properly. It w- did not work for me. And then I went to Christina and bought three more policies that were set up properly. So we're going to leave that information here. But the way I understood it was like, you can set yourself up to be paying, for example, $100 a month. But you could, if you have extra money or whatever, there's an amount that you can contribute extra, basically, that's still not going, you're still not going to have to pay taxes on that's that premium, right? So it's like, your back premium might be like $5,000 a year. And you look and if you've been paying $100 a month, it's whatever that math is, $1,200. I should put some of my Christmas bonus in here. It could get up to 5k, right? Anything over 5k would be taxed. So I I don't know if that's a dumbed down. That is perfect. That is a perfect explanation. So you just want to stay within the sweet (laughs) spot. Yeah, no, that was perfect. That was such a good explanation. I know sometimes I feel like I throw out so much like insure insurance uh, jargon just because I've been doing it for so long, but that was the perfect gump down version of that. So you just want to have like that sweet spot of where you, if if you want to contribute above and beyond, great. Most people don't, unfortunately, because like, what do we do when we have extra money, right? Like we go on vacation or whatever, but you want to make sure the premium is low enough to where you're happy if you don't, but you still have that amount of the MEC premium to where you can still contribute above and beyond that if um, that's something that's really important to you to do, whether Mm -hmm. it's for you or your kids. Hi, it's Kalia. IGC coach training grad and six-figure certified coach. I know you're here listening to these incredible stories of successful coaches and wondering, when will it be my turn? I'm sure you entered this year with the goal of finally stepping into your purpose. And there is no better way than enrolling in IGC's internationally accredited coach training program. Enrollment is open now and it is your turn. So take the first step by going to innerglowcircle.com forward slash call right now and book a free call with me. Your six figure certified story starts today. Yeah, I love it. Well, and I I feel like this is just information that not enough women know about. It's an opportunity not enough people know about. I do know that if you're kind of in the financial world, that's talked about a lot more. There's people who hate them. There's people who love them and live by them. It's an option for you. It's definitely worth investigating whether you're sure or not. If it's like, I would highly recommend talking to Christina and learning about the options. But I want to ask you too, like you are, have been very successful at selling insurance. And I, I mean, I just love a woman who can sell. Like, I believe that if women can sell, they will always be okay. They will always be okay. It is a skill that you have to learn. But what kind of had you shift not from, because I know you're still doing both, but why did you add coaching? Like, how did that make sense to you? Oh, yeah. So I got into life insurance because I wanted to work for myself. I didn't want to um, have a cap on how much I was worth. I wasn't ever going to let anybody tell me how much I was worth making. And I really jumped into something that I knew nothing about. I'm um, I'm a little bit of a risk taker. Uh, there's pros <laughs> and cons there. But after doing insurance, I kind of realized um, last summer actually was, I was like, you know what? I am not feeling like I'm helping people financially. Because like I even talk about products that I don't even do and just educate people because I believe that knowledge should be shared. I I believe that struggle should be shared so that way you can like help other people. So I wanted though to help people more intimately because what changed my life wasn't necessarily the finances and being successful. What got me to a better financial place and what got me to be successful was my mindset, Mm. was the limiting beliefs that I had to crush. It was all of the personal development and all of the time that I put into myself. Um, You know, I had a terrible, a terrible relationship with money. I had to heal my relationship with money. And it's still even now is an ongoing, you know, relationship when you grow up with, when you said like, I inherited trauma, I get it. You know, and if you grow up, like I grew up with a single mom. So, you know, we were just trying to get by. Right. And so investing, that wasn't even something that I even thought about. Like, I almost thought it was like too good for me. Like I still was like, Oh, I'm like, subconsciously, oh, Christina, you're so poor. Like, you can't even look into that. And I'm like, wait, no, I'm not. Like, it's just, it's so crazy how our minds work. So I wanted to get into coaching because it's, my mindset has changed my life. 
and it has changed other people's life because not only am I going after what I want, but I'm pulling people with me and yeah. getting in a good fit for me. And she was like, she's like, yeah, if it's a good fit, fit for me, it's going to be for you. Like, why not? Yeah. And so um, I wanted to get into coaching because I thought it's more fulfilling getting to the root. People think that if they win the lottery, that it's going to fix all their problems, but you're still going with it. You're still you. So until like your mindset is, has healed and your limiting beliefs are gone, like you can lose it as quickly as you get it. And we see stories yeah. like that all the time. Oh yeah. So, what I'm thinking of when you're speaking is just like money just makes you more of who you are. So if you don't have those parts of yourself cleaned up or, you know, from disempowered to empowered, you're going to carry those negative mindsets with you no matter how much money you make. And you're yeah. like, it's like wherever you go, there you are. Yeah. Well, that's why you're going to see people who, and I have now where like, they'll get like a huge, you know, commission. And then what do they do? They blow it on, you know, bottle service for a weekend. And then they're back to broke because that they do not believe that they're worthy of keeping their funds. Like there's yeah. so many things that we do to sabotage our own success. And until like, you really get to the root of that and, and who you are, like, you're not going to keep anything like hard work is necessary in my opinion to be successful, but you have to get right with you first to keep it. And if yeah. you want to maintain it and be happy. And I think coaching kind of helps you not kind of, it does. It helps you get to who you are and heals. I, I think it brings you back to who you actually are, not who you were conditioned to be from childhood or, or whatever age. It's yeah. super important. So that's why I wanted to get into coaching is I wanted to help people like the version of me from you know six years ago that was depressed couldn't get out of bed had no idea like couldn't even afford groceries and like literally I had an audible credit for like twenty dollars and I bought my first personal development book and that was my therapy oh my God, what book was, was it it was of uh, universe has your back by oh, Gabby Bernstein yeah that was that was one of my first ones I've read probably hundreds at this point but that was the first one and that got me into um, kind of more spirituality into um, meditating, journaling, uh, understanding that my mental health is, is, has to come first and then everything else follows. Because if your mind is right, your finances are going to be right. If your mind is right, your physical health is going to be right because your mind is stronger than everything else. Yeah. So coaching to me was super powerful for that reason. And I wanted to help people on a more intimate level than just finances. I wanted to get to the root of the problem. I love it. And so what do you, are you coaching a lot of people in the insurance space now or women in sales? I like, have. what is your, yeah. Oh yeah, I have. So at first, because I'm great at sales, but I hadn't gone through the entire program yet. So I was like, oh great. So I was attracting a ton of people in the life insurance realm. And I think what they were anticipating was more for me to teach them how to sell insurance. And mm -hmm. I was like, hey, like we got it. So I kind of had to regroup a little bit. So a lot of the coaching I do now has a lot to do with sales and just kind of um, all of them are women right now. I, I would help anybody, but they're just women just kind of like, so it starts with sales, but really what it's turned into is like squashing limited, limiting beliefs and healing your relationship with money has been kind of the like main source of, of everything. Because um, if you don't heal your relationship with money, what happens is like you self-sabotage hey, you know, so-and-so, why didn't you go prospect? Why didn't you go look at businesses in your area? You know, so-and-so could use you. And it's yeah. like, oh, I was tired. I was this. And it's like, well, is that, is that the case? Or do you, like, you have to work on believing that you're deserving of it. Because, like, we so get in our own way when it comes to stuff like that. That's so interesting. I never thought about it like that, but it makes so much sense. It's like, we always, well... We, I think any human has made excuses for why they cannot do something. I was leading this workshop last night and I prefaced it with saying like, do not sit here for the next 90 minutes and then do nothing. Like yeah. you're going to make an excuse the second you get off this workshop, like why you can't follow up with your leads, why you can't write your sales script, why you can't do this. Like you're tired, the kids, the this, the that. But at the end of the day, I think we can all admit that if it's something that we really want, we can make it happen. So if we're not, what is the blockage? And I think you make such a good point in bringing up the worthiness thing, like which part of you or what part of you actually doesn't believe that you're worthy of the success or the reward that comes on the other side of taking that action? Yeah. Because if you thought you were worthy, like if you knew for a fact that if you talked to this person and that you 100% would close the deal and would make the money, there would be nothing in you that would stop you from doing yeah. that because you know you need it. 
and you know that you know that's the way to go but you're doing it because you just don't think it's true you don't believe you have what it takes or you just don't think you're deserving of it because staying broke is more comfortable because that's what you were raised in I mean that was certainly something I um, ran into a ton I was like oh I don't deserve a nice car I don't I don't need it It was my, my blockage was um, before purchasing my Audi now that I love and I'm so happy about. Um, that's my dream car. It doesn't have to be anyone else's. But I was like, oh no, just Christina, that's so wasteful. That's such that's such wasteful money. Just go get a Honda. Like you you love your Hondas. Nothing wrong with Hondas. I love my Hondas. But just get like a reliable car. And it was like, it was me gaslighting myself that telling myself that I didn't want it. And like, yeah. oh, you're just being frivolous. And it's like, what's wrong with being frivolous? Like I'm paying my bills. Like I'm paying my things on time. What's wrong? What, like I'm deserving of nice things. And yeah. it came from a place of, oh gosh, I'm oversharing now. Sorry, Liv. Um, you know, what I'm this like, is what you people know. need to know though. And like, yeah. I did a talk a couple of weeks ago and everyone was saying like, I want to make money so I can give back. And yes, that's noble. And yes, I believe, but, but it's also okay to just say like, I want to make money because I want nice experiences or I want nice things, or I want to live in a beautiful home or drive a comfortable car. Especially if we've come from places where we didn't have a nice home or we didn't have a, a ride, right? Like we have been there, not even yeah. having transportation. And if you can put yourself, it doesn't make you selfish. It makes you wanting to you, you know, experience humanity and life on a good level that you have worked hard for I just don't think there's anything to be ashamed of for that it doesn't mean that you don't give back you don't have to justify it yeah well and you also have to be confident with what you provide right so um for me and this is what I love about IGC and the women that are attracted to IGC and get signed up is that everybody operates from a place of integrity so two things that I live by one is Whatever you obtain out of integrity, you have to stay out of integrity to keep. That's number one. Because there's people who in the life insurance world can be, not everybody, but can be very money hungry, which is why they don't care to learn how to set up those products, which is why some of these products have a such a bad rap, not because there aren't good ones, but because the people are like, well, I have to pay my bills too. And it's like, okay, but the reason why I've I truly believe the reason why I've had a level of success is because I've consistently done the right thing. So that's number one. And then number two, when it comes to finances and money is money isn't everything, but it is the tool to give the people you love everything. And that's the whole thing too. It's like, yes, like whether you're donating or, or whatever. And the thing in abundance is too, I think people get need to get out of the mindset of it just being monetary. I have sat down with IGC students or just anybody like Christina, please just educate me. We didn't even get them set up with a policy because we had to wait a week or whatever it was, but just like educating them on high yield savings accounts, by the way, PSA, everybody get one. Okay. It sounds like a really long name. A high yield savings account is the exact same one you have at your bank, but you make anywhere from three to 7% interest. That is free money that is sitting there anyways, go get one. I don't set those up, go get one. But I tell like abundance and and those kind of things are also just like knowledge. It is kindness. It is thoughtfulness. It is picking up the phone and and seeing how you can be of service to somebody you love and care about. So even if you feel like, because that was a big thing for me, I had, there was a time I had zero dollars. I was living off of um, pasta for three months and it was so depressed. It was, it was awful. But what I was able to give and what I was able to contribute was, you know, my good energy. I could be of service. I could help a friend move. I could help get somebody out of a bad place. Yeah. And so if that's all you have to give to start, that's okay. And that is an abundant mindset. And so that was something I had to learn too. Yeah. Well, you make a good point there too, which I immediately think of is like, you have the internet. I mean, most people have social media, right? And you could have no money in the bank, but could you still put a positive message out there? Could you still teach people something? Could you still show up and and share your core values to, and start building that audience and building that presence while you, you know, wait to have the funds to invest in a business or invest in a training or whatever else? I think people forget that just being a person with a unique viewpoint and a unique value set is valuable and it it does make you worthy like your humanity alone if you choose to tap into it and share it i think giving away knowledge and sharing your story and sharing resources that you have even if they're not paid resources can be the thing that puts you in the energetic space to also receive that abundance back 
Oh, absolutely. Something um, that, that's like, I had goosebumps. I loved that. A really, really powerful story. Um, and I haven't talked about this in a while. So it like, this is just what it reminded me of. So when I was in that place where I was struggling, I had just paid my rent and I had five ninety five, I think in my bank account. And I hadn't gotten like five dollars that five dollars and 95 cents and i was like and starbucks was cheaper at the time so i like googled i was like i just want to do something nice for myself like i haven't left my bed i've been doing nothing but working like please god universe please like help me out like please don't punish me for getting letting me you know me being selfish quote unquote and going getting myself coffee that was like my nice thing i was going to do for myself this month and i remember going in the drive through and it, it was not like around the holidays, but somebody just had spontaneously paid for my coffee. They're like, oh, the guy in front of you paid for it. I was like 10 cents, like away from having 10 cents in my account. Right. And I literally got my coffee and I went in the parking lot in my car and I broke down. I was just like, I was so grateful. And then after that, maybe three months later, um, I started making six figures and consistently, because wow. that's the big thing too, with self-employment is consistently consistency. So on a weekly basis, I started putting out, um, Starbucks gift cards on my story with the scanner and just and being like, Hey, you know what? Coffee on me. If you're having a bad day, this is for you. And I got so much feedback from that. And they're like, Oh, you're so nice. And I'm like, no, 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 no. This is, this is my chance to give back. This is my yeah. responsibility as somebody who's been through it. And that was such a powerful, day. like, I will never forget that day. Starbucks has actually now cut me off because they think I'm like a spammy person. I have to talk about oh, what I was doing. It. I was doing it weekly on my story because I, it's just, we're all here to learn and to give. And I, I truly believe that your pain is never wasted, that your trauma, your circumstances, your story is enough to be a benefit to others. And that is abundant. Um, it doesn't always have to be monetary or even if it is monetary, it doesn't have to be a lot. If you put 10, you know, $10 in your savings account today, that is abundant. That is showing yourself that you're worthy of saving and yeah. of preparing for a good future. If you open up a high yield savings account, everybody do that. <laughs> like that's showing that you're worthy of making free interest in your sleep. That's what that is. If you, you know, pick up the phone and be like, okay, how can I be of service to you? Not to everybody, obviously. I'm not saying like waste your time, but you know, th there's so much more to being abundant than just making money. And once yeah. you tap into that and start, you know, giving from that place and you operate from a place of integrity, like truly like the universe rewards you just over and over and over again for, for those things. Wow. I, I love that. And thank you for sharing that story too. I feel like these are the kinds of things that women, no matter what phase of business or life they're in, just need to hear and they need to see examples of people making things possible. And so I really appreciate that and all of your, you know, financial expertise, especially during this money making season of March. And so as we kind of wrap up, I would love to get your final thoughts on this because I know it's something I say all the time, but what are your thoughts on more money in the hands of women who know what to do with it? Like, what does that mean to oh you? Oh my gosh. So I know you talked about sales too. I think sales is the most important skill set anybody should have, men or women in general. Like regardless if you're in a sales position or not, it's going to change your life. With women, women are so, so powerful. And it's so funny because as a gender, you know, you're going to find more women who don't believe they're worthy than men any day. And women are just so naturally nurturing for the most part. Now, obviously I can't speak for everybody, but just like nurturing and caring and loving. And if you like put that alongside an unbreakable work ethic and a vision and a heart to serve, that's when you're going to start seeing like these powerhouses of women. I definitely consider you one of them. Yeah. And, you know, it's just all the women we look up to like Oprah, like, you know, she was, yeah. it's just when you have it, in the right hands of people who want to serve, have a mission, know what to do with it. I, I truly believe that you can change so many people's life by living in your vision and um, coming from your heart, right? Um, learning yeah. the skill sets you need. So I think it's super powerful. Women are so powerful. Um, you know, I, I just, I don't know. I do business with all women. <laughs> I, just, I don't know. I, I think that's just, it's just really important. Yeah. And we need to get more of that. We just need to crush the limiting beliefs of people that they're not worthy. And once we get past that, we're able to help more people and make yeah. a bigger impact for people. Yeah. 
I love that. Thank you. And I think if nothing else, I hope this podcast and this episode makes every woman listening believe that like you, you don't have to be out of the game, whether it's a small life insurance policy or learning how to sell or putting 10 cents a week in a, in a high yield savings account. There's little things, calling a friend, giving someone a Starbucks that we can all do to kind of reset the tone of our life, to realign ourselves with abundance and to just start making smarter decisions that bring us closer to our vision every day. So if anything that we talked about today, especially in terms of like the life insurance conversation or any of that resonates with you, we're going to leave all of Christina's info in the show notes, reach out to her. I know she has a big Instagram presence. She's always educating her community on different types of, you know, financial things, also travel, which I know we didn't touch on today, but if you're interested in that, she talks about that too. And of of course, coaching and sales coaching. All of that info will be in the show notes. And Christina, I just want to thank you so much for so openly sharing your knowledge. No, thank you so much for having me. This has been a dream come true. Truly, I hope this was helpful. I know my um, ADD brain kind of went a little everywhere, but um, ask me any questions you need. Um, I'll make sure I have all of my information there for you to get in touch with me. And I don't know. Thank you so much again. Awesome. Thank you so much, Christina. We'll see you all next week. Yeah. See ya.